Chapter One Felix stood at the edge of the grove, sniffing the air carefully. Something was not right. There was no immediate danger. The scent was faint, so whoever had been here was long gone. What troubled him was that the scent was unfamiliar. After sixteen years in the forest, he could easily recognise the scent of all the animals who lived here. This animal was new. He lowered his snout to trace the smell, but there were no clear markings. The ground was littered with leaves, the earth beneath still soft from the recent rain. Any prints the animal might have left behind had now been washed away. Lifting his head, Felix looked around for any signs of disturbance. His nest of leaves was untouched, though a little sodden from the rain. The berry bushes were bursting with fruit, just as he had left them. At the base of a nearby oak, a miniature forest of large, juicy mushrooms had sprouted. At least there's some upside to all this rain, he grumbled, walking towards the mushrooms. He rummaged amongst them, searching for any telltale white stubs where a stalk had been bitten off. Apart from one giant slug feasting on a particularly large head, the mushrooms were intact. Felix was confused. Why would any animal break into his private grove and not take advantage of the facility? He downed the mushroom, slug and all, lost in thought. From the corner of his eye, he spotted a tiny mouse sneaking back to his hole. You there, mouse, he bellowed. The tiny mouse froze. Y -y yes, sir. Who's been here in this grove? Other than you? No one, sir. No one ever comes here. Everyone knows this is your grove, sir. Someone has been here, Felix insisted. I can smell them. I didn't see anyone, sir. But now that you mention it, I did notice a strange smell. Maybe two nights ago. There were footprints, too. Footprints? I saw no footprints. Felix snapped his head around, searching the ground again for any sign of prints. Where were they exactly? Over there, sir, where you usually come in. Felix walked back to the entrance to examine the ground. What kind of prints were they? Human? Animal? They looked a bit like dog prints, but... But what? Felix demanded. He was getting impatient. But they were very large, and in some places there were only two prints, not four. What kind of dog walks on two feet? Felix's mind went into a spin. He'd been in this forest for a long time and seen hundreds of dogs, but he had never seen one that walked on two legs. What else did you see? I need to know every detail. N nothing else, sir. Just the strange smell and the paw prints. The prints were only in that one spot. Whoever it was, I don't think they were here for long. Felix sniffed the earth thoroughly, imprinting the faint smell to his memory. He wanted to be sure he would recognise it if he came across it again. Behind him, the mouse slipped down into his hole. Making his way back to the oak tree, Felix took another cursory look around the grove, but could find no other sign of the intruder. He paused to munch on a number of mushrooms, then settled down into his nest of leaves, wriggling from side to side to fluff them up. They were still slightly damp, but he didn't mind. The forest had been too hot recently, and Felix had been finding it hard to keep cool. The damp leaves now tucked around him were refreshing. Closing his eyes, Felix tried to imagine a dog-like creature who walked on two feet. Did it walk tall, like the hunters? Or was it short, with disproportionately big feet? If the feet were big, maybe the ears were big too. He allowed his imagination to shape several odd-looking creatures as he slowly drifted to sleep. When Felix opened his eyes again, the sun had disappeared, but the grove was still bright. The sky was clear and the full moon beamed down casting long shadows across the forest floor. Felix did not like the full moon. 
Some of the animals behaved strangely during a full moon, but that was not what troubled him. The problem was the hunters. As he lay curled in his nest of leaves, Felix contemplated the number of his offspring he had lost to the hunters. Sometimes they came in the daytime with their dogs, sending the sounders squealing through the forest. Each gunshot indicated the ending of a life. On a bad day, or a good day if he were a hunter, Felix supposed, they would shoot over 20 pigs, mostly young adults. The hunters did not bother with the piglets. These they left for the foxes and martens. The moon hunts were different. The hunters waited in the open field surrounding the forest, using the light of the full moon to shoot their prey as they emerged to graze. They took mainly deer and boar, but might take foxes and rabbits if the light was particularly good. Occasionally, they would come into the forest and fire shots into the air to frighten the animals out into the open. Felix was not fooled by such trickery. Though he did not like the idea of his family suffering, Felix often thought the hunters were doing him a favour. They targeted the biggest, strongest boars, exactly those who might challenge Felix for mating rights. The biggest boars also had the biggest appetites. Removing them from the forest left more food for Felix. The forest simply could not sustain a large population and the hunters helped to keep the numbers in check. They were overdue a good hunt. Food had been tight recently and winter was coming. Felix stood a better chance of making it through the harsh, snowy months if there were fewer boars competing for the same slim rations. As long as he stayed safely out of sight, tonight's hunt was a good thing. The following morning, after a good breakfast, Felix went to check the outcome of the hunt. He found one of the sounders in their usual spot, but from the whining and commotion, he could tell that some animals had indeed been killed. He located the matriarch, Katana, nesting on a pile of bracken. Six humbug-striped piglets nuzzled at her teats. How many lost? Felix demanded. Katana stared into the distance, indifferent to Felix's harsh tone. Three, she said, including my sister, Alanta. Alanta had whelped eight piglets earlier that summer, two of which had already been snatched by a wily fox. The remaining six would now be nursed by the other sows in the sounder. Like Felix, Katana had seen her fair share of hunting and was better at dealing with the losses than the others. In her calmer state, she was taking the first shift feeding the piglets. Felix noticed a burly male piglet on one of the teats closest to Katana's shoulder. He knew that piglets who fed from the first teat tended to grow up strongest and often went on to be matriarchs or primary mating boars. He would need to keep an eye on this little chap. How many hunters were there this time? Felix said. We only saw two, Katana said. Alanta, Nina and Clara were on their way to the cornfield on the far side of the long lane. The hunters were obviously waiting for them. They shot them when they were about halfway across the field. With the corn now cut, they had nowhere to hide. There must have been more around at the bite. We've heard at least two stags were taken there. Not the worst moon hunt we've seen then, Felix said. Katana ignored him. The piglets had finished suckling for now. She stood up slowly and shuffled off amongst the trees. The recent rain had brought on a swell of mushrooms. She passed a few solitary speckle tops and made her way to a cluster of brown caps. She would eat these first, before they were scoffed by one of the others, and then make her way through the less exciting varieties. She knew there was a large cluster of red caps near the woodpile, but she would save those for another day. Today, she wanted to stay close to the sounder. Her sows needed her. Felix was about to wander off when Blaze, the burly male piglet, scurried over and started to tussle at Felix's feet. Felix did not ordinarily spend much time with his children, but this little guy was so animated and seemingly fearless that he caught his attention. Felix nuzzled down to take a sniff 
and Blaise began to headbutt him playfully. Felix was taken aback by his audacity. He could crush the little fellow so easily. But Felix was not drawn to crushing him. Instead, he was amused. He nudged Blaise away, encouraging the tussle, spurring on this feisty ball of energy. Blaise took a few steps back so he could run at Felix. He whacked his tiny head into Felix's huge snout and immediately fell back on his bum from the force of the collision. Felix roared with laughter as Blaise picked himself up and shook his little head, dazed and confused. Let's see what the little guy's made of. Felix nudged him again, pushing Blaise several feet back. Unperturbed, Blaise steeled himself for another rush at the enormous head. Again, he bounced off like rain off a leaf. He jumped up, and after another quick moment of recovery, he ran around to try approaching from another angle. Felix was intrigued by his ingenuity at such a young age. Having crashed and burned a third time, Blaise apparently decided he'd had enough and shot off to join his brothers and sisters. Felix, still smiling from the encounter, turned and trotted off into the forest.